just glad to be here on Resurrection Sunday. Give the Lord a praise. He's no longer in the tomb, but He is risen. Amen. We are so honored that you are here today. It's, it's a very busy day for this team behind me. They've been here since very early this morning. And we're just honored that you've chosen to come to the early service, the 9 o'clock service. Now, I'm just overwhelmed at how many have shown up for the 9 o'clock service. We're so thankful that you're here. Give yourselves a hand. Amen. We're going to worship just a little bit more, but we do need to receive your tithe and offering because we are building a $3 million building. So... Somebody said, are you going to take up offering on Sunday? I said, yes, we are. So, because we are we are building a new building. We're just so excited. We do uh, appreciate your tithe and your offering. And Brother Shannon, get a couple of fellows to come and help me this morning. We want to do that. As you came in the door this morning, you received a cup uh, for uh, the communion service. And we will be doing that toward the end of the service. So just hang on to that. Amen. Would you help me pray today? Father God, I just thank you for your blessings. I thank you for Resurrection Sunday. I thank you for a time, Father, that we can give of ourselves in worship and praise. We can give of ourselves in financial giving. We pray, Father, your blessings today. We pray that in this service, if there is one here that hasn't given their heart to you, that somewhere throughout this service that your spirit begin to touch them, let them see the need of a risen Savior in their life. Lord, we thank you. For, for the tithe, for the gift. We thank you for the worship and the praise. And we pray that you have your will in this house today. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord.
know, in First Peter, it says that it's Jesus was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest manifest in the last times for the sake of you, for our sake. Through him are believers in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that our faith and hope are in God. This Jesus, he said, I have all authority Come on. in heaven and in earth. And it has been given to him from the Father. He said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age.
the Lord. Aren't you glad that He's alive? Amen. Amen. You may be seated this morning. I'm telling you, I'm so glad to see you at Hope City. We're just honored that you've chosen to come worship with us today uh, in the house of the Lord. God is just good, and we appreciate Him and appreciate you being here. We want you to remember that we are, we will have, at, after the 1130 service, we will have the events for the kiddos. Uh, the kids have got to enjoy Easter. Amen. Give our children a hand. Don't they look beautiful today? Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Just so honored to be here today. and We just thank you for coming and worshiping with us on a beautiful uh, Easter Sunday morning. Uh, this is Resurrection Sunday. It is one of the, it is, I think it's the greatest uh, celebration of the body of Christ. The only thing that's going to be better than Resurrection Sunday is when we are caught out of here Sunday. Amen. That is going to be the best one of them all. If you have your Bibles this morning, I want you to open with me to the book of Mark chapter 15. Mark chapter 15. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm excited to preach. And I told the worship team, I said, just give me at least 30 minutes. And so they've given me a little more than 30 minutes. So y'all might be in trouble. I, I, may, I may be feeding you all the hay I got in the barn today. No, I'm not. Mark chapter 15. Mark chapter 15. I'm going to go to verse 42, and then I'm going to read a part from verse chapter 16. Mark chapter 15, and uh, also I'm going to read from Mark 16 and starting at verse 1. Starting at verse 42. Let me, let me preface this just a little bit. This is the, the time of the burial of Christ. The burial of Christ. This, this message has been rolling in me for about two months. You know, I try to stay prepared on what I'm coming up with or what the Lord gives me. And the Lord put this in me over two months ago. So uh, Mark chapter four, 15, verse number 42, and the word said, And now when the even was come, or in the evening, because it was the preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and went boldly unto Pilate and craved the body of Jesus. And Pilate marveled if he were already, as if he were already dead, and calling unto him the centurion, he asked him whether he had been any while dead. Talking about Jesus. And when he knew it of the centurion, he gave the body, the body of Jesus, to Joseph. And he brought fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in linen and laid him in the sepulcher which was hewn out of a rock and rolled the, a stone unto the door of the sepulcher. And Mary Magdalene, I want you to pay a part, real close attention to this part. And Mary Magdalene and, and Mary the mother of Jesus beheld where he was laid. Go with me chapter 16, verse number 1. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Jesus and Salome had brought sweet, bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him, anointing Jesus. And very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they came to the sepulcher at the rising of the sun, and they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord this morning. Turn around and look at your neighbor and say, I'm glad you're here. Tell Come on, tell somebody, say, you clean up right nice. I wouldn't hardly recognize, no, I'm just kidding. Amen. This morning, all across our country, there are hundreds, thousands of messages being preached today. On the resurrection. Thousands of messages being preached. They started early this morning in many congregations across the country. They started uh, at sunrise services, services at the break of day, where we find that Mary and the, the Marys uh, and, and several of the ladies got up at the break of day, at daylight. So those services started across the country today. There are so many sermons or so many thoughts or passages that a pastor could take a message from. I could go all the way back to the time when Jesus comes into the city and Jesus is getting ready to come in and it's Passover. 
It's, it's the coming of Passover. And for those of us or those of you that do not know what Passover is in the Jewish custom, we also recognize it in a Christian uh, uh, world today. But the Passover was, was a celebration of the death angel passing over them while they were in Egypt. We, I think one of the pastors mentioned it the other night. And while they were there and, and Moses was sent to be a deliverer, Moses is a type and shadow of Christ in the Old Testament. He is a deliverer. They were in bondage, you and I, were in bondage. They were in bondage and they were in bondage for hundreds of years and, and after the, the plagues came and on the tenth plague uh, the death angel came by and the scripture says that the death angel would went to every household and he was taking the firstborn. He was he was going to take he was going to kill the firstborn of every household unless that, that, that household had killed a lamb and taken the blood and put it on a brush and put brushed the doorpost around the door frame of that house. And when the angel saw the blood he passed over aren't you glad for the blood amen okay I could preach this morning about the Passover because that's the celebration that they were about getting ready to enter into. I could preach this morning about where they came into the city and, and Jesus come riding in on a coat and people were throwing coats out in front of Him singing Hosanna to the King. I could preach about Him being the King coming into the city. I could preach that message this morning. And I thought about that, how that Jesus came in and the crowds and multitudes, uh, there were hundreds, thousands of them that were crying unto Him and they were ready to receive Him. And that same crowd, only just a day later, was yelling, crucify him. The very same crowd. I could preach a message about that. I could preach a message this morning, how that he came into the city, and how that, how that when they, uh, he was in the garden, and he was praying, and Judas sold him out for 30 pieces of silver. And the Bible said that Judas came into the garden, and when he came to the garden, he was, his sign to them was he would give him a kiss. And he ran up to Jesus, who had been praying with three of his disciples, uh, apostles, and he came up to him and he put his arms around him and he kissed him and, and, the, and the, the soldiers came in and they arrested Christ on that day. I could preach a message how that Peter, when those soldiers drawed them, uh, came in, Peter drew out his sword and he was ready to fight and he cut an ear off of one of the men that was standing there and Jesus picked the ear up and put it back on the man and said, Peter, this is not what we're about to do. I didn't come to do a fight like this but my battle is not with flesh and blood, but my battle is against spiritual things. My battle is oh, let me preach right now. My battle's not with a church down the road. My battle's not with another pastor. My battle's not with you, but my battle's with an adversary. But thanks be to God that we have a Savior that is risen, that has given us victory over the adversary. I can preach a message about that today. I'm not preaching that message. I'm not preaching a message how they put him, uh, they took him, uh, Pilate took him, and Pilate wanted to let him go. Herod, they wanted to let him go. They really did not want to crucify him. Yeah, and they even made the statement, the statement is in the Bible, and you can find it in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All of what I'm telling you this morning, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you can find the scripture that uh, gives these accounts, and Pilate, he didn't want to, he, he tried every way in the world. He actually went into the prison, and he dug out, as, as Pastor Isaiah preached the other night, he dug out the absolute word of the worst of the prisoners. He dug out a murderer. He dug out one that had done so many vile things that nobody would want him. And he thought, I'll make him a choice. And surely they'll take Barabbas because he deserves death. But that same crowd that was crying Hosanna said, no, give us Jesus. Let us crucify Jesus. We want to put him on the cross. It just blows my mind. But see, it was all prophesied that the lamb would be taken to the slaughter. Mm. This is good this morning. It was prophesied that the lamb must die for us. John chapter 3 verse 15 says, uh, uh, tells us that Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. John 3.16 says that God loved us so much that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. It didn't say whosoever believes, whosoever is a part of Hope City Church or, or the Baptist Church or the Church of God or the Pentecostal Church or the Methodist Church or whatever religion that you want to put a denomination. But it said whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. 
Hallelujah. I'm so thankful today for the blood of Christ. This morning we could talk from Matthew and Mark and Luke and John. We could talk how that that that, that, that they took Jesus and they beat him. They stripped him of his raiments. Uh, they 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 took his clothes off of him. They took a cat of nine tails and they beat him thirty nine times with a whip with nine nine tails on it with shards of glass and metal that were put in it to bring him more torture. That I could t- teach you this morning how they took a reed or stick and they slapped him in the head with the stick and. They They took their hand and they slapped him in the face. I could preach to you this morning how they tore his beard from his face and they spat upon his face and how that they were mocking him because they were saying he was a king of the Jews and they and they fashioned a crown of thorns and they buried it, sunk it in his head, and they beat him. They put a cross upon his back. They made him walk up the hill that's called the place of the skull. And after they put him up there, they drove nails into his hands and his feet and he hung there I could preach to you this morning about the I've done a lot of research I could preach to you this morning about the excruciating death of crucifixion this Jesus wasn't the first one to die on a cross he wasn't the last to die on a cross but the Romans had perfected crucifixion they had perfected it so much that they would nail their victims to the cross. And they would almost always nail their victims to the cross. And, and uh, that's why in the text that we read this morning, in chapter uh, number 15, when Pilate marveled that Jesus was already dead because he was only there for six hours. And, uh, because usually this was a long, excruciating death. They would hang him. And as their bodies would begin to begin to get tired and, and they could not pull themselves up so much, they would actually suffocate. Their, their, their bodies would, would close up on their lungs. That's why that when Jesus was hanging there, and it was because it was before the Sabbath, and they wanted to get this over with, they came and started breaking the legs of the, of the people that was on the cross, the thieves in Christ. Because they did not want them to have the strength to push themselves back up. They wanted them to die. But Jesus was already dead at this particular point. And the Bible said that the soldier took a spear and he pierced it into his side and blood hit the ground. I'm so thankful for every drop of that blood. Because it's by that blood that you and I are born again. It's by that blood that you and I have a way to heaven. It's by that blood that we can overcome the things that are in our life. It's by that blood that I have been made free. It's by that blood that I have been redeemed. It's by that blood that I have been born again. It's by that blood that I have been made new. By that blood. Not the blood of sheep, not the blood of lambs, not the blood of of offerings of doves that had been practiced for so many years. See, I could preach that when Jesus said, It is finished. And he hung his head and he died. That the curtain rent in twain in two that went in the Holy of Holies uh, that gave you and I a right now because he is our high priest uh, and we can go to the Father through and by the name of Jesus. What a wonderful day. So many messages that we could preach. So many messages. But I want to talk today on the latter part. The scripture says in that latter text or that latter part, It tells us that that Jesus had died. Now bear with me for just a minute. Jesus had died and there was a man who was serving Christ, following Christ. He was a member of the council. He was was a a, a people, the Bible even gives the description that he was on his way, he was wanting to go to heaven. He was on the path to heaven. He, He but he, the, the Scripture says that he went before Pilate and he desired the body of Jesus. We don't ever read in any of the other Gospels of a fellow by the name of Joseph of Arimathea. We, he's not one of the twelve. He was not one of, the, one of those that when Jesus was in the garden and said, you know, can you not stay awake and pray with me? He was not there uh, 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 with him eating the Last Supper. He was not Joseph of Arimathea that we find in the Scripture. He, he, this is the first, first we hear of him. And so Joseph comes to Pilate. Now the Scripture he actually says that he was brave enough. Are you brave enough today to serve him? 
He had enough he had enough courage in his heart that he went to Pilate and he begged for the body of Christ. In our reading this morning, in, 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 in uh, Mark chapter 15, he, he begged for the body of Christ. And Pilate, he says, into himself, he said, he can't be dead yet. So he asked a soldier, he says, give me a report on this Jesus. And the soldier said, he's dead. You know, maybe he was there when he pierced him with, with the spear. May have been the one that pierced him with the spear. He said, he's dead. Oh, he's dead. So he gave Joseph of Arimathea, he gave him permission to remove the body. Now you've got to remember, this is Friday. Woo, hallelujah. This is Friday. Saturday's about to come, and to Saturday is the Sabbath, and they're not allowed to do anything on the Sabbath. The Sabbath is a holy day. Very few things. You even prepared most of your food before the Sabbath, so you didn't have to do a lot of preparation. So the Sabbath was their holy day. And so this was Friday. So Joseph said, I want to get him. I want to get him buried. I don't want him hanging there all weekend. I don't want him on the cross all weekend. I don't, I don't want the fowls of the air doing anything to him. I don't, he, he's open shame. He's hanging naked upon look. I do not want that. That is my Savior. That is my Lord. That is the King of Kings. That is my Messiah. Messiah, I do not want him on the cross. These are the thoughts that's going through Joseph's mind. And so Joseph goes up and he, and he, and he gets a friend and he gets him off the cross and he buys a linen and he buys a, a, a cloth and he begins to wrap him. The scripture, one scripture in one of the gospels says that they begin to put uh, incense and they begin to put spices uh, and they pour it upon the body of Christ uh, and very quickly they make him ready for the tomb. Something that usually, if you read in Jewish history, takes a couple of days. They've done it in less than an hour probably. They got him ready. So the scripture says, well this has been burning inside of me. The scripture says that Mary and Martha and some of the women were sitting back just a little ways and they were watching as they removed. Can you imagine the heart of his mother as a stranger takes him off the cross and begins to wrap him in a cloth? Can you imagine the heart of Mary Magdalene of whom he cast out the devils saw a stranger remove him from the from the cross? Can you imagine the, 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 the heart of Martha who watched Watched him raise her brother from the dead uh, as a stranger took him off the cross uh, and put him in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a blanket and began to wrap him. Uh, can you imagine their heartbreak saying, oh, that needs to be my job. That needs to be something that I do. His mother wanted to be there, but she was not allowed to be there. So here Joseph is, a stranger, wrapping him up. The scripture says, if you read it, you'll find in one of the Gospels that Mary and those other women, they went after they, oh, Joseph wrapped him up and they went into the tomb and they put him in Joseph's tomb. And they put him in the tomb that Mary, before the Sabbath, the Mary and the women, they went and bought spices so that they could prepare. I cannot imagine what went through their head the next day. First of all, not only... Thank you, Jesus. First of all, not only was He in the tomb, but now there was this huge stone in front of the tomb. Because they watched Him as these men came, and the Scripture even bears out it was a very large stone, and they rolled it in front of the, the tomb of Christ. And uh, not only was there a tomb in, or a stone in front of the tomb, but also uh, the, 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 the high priest was afraid that somebody was going to steal it, so they put guards on the outside. Not only did they put guards on the outside and have a stone in front of it, but they put the Roman seal on the tomb. That nobody would disturb it. So here we go. Now we're on the Sabbath day. Just bear with me for a second. Let me paint this picture. Now we're on the Sabbath day. And those that loved Him are gathered in a room. Their hearts are broken. Perhaps they, they walk outside and they look across the, the, the place and they look at the they can see the stone that is there. Perhaps they, they're able enough not to break the Sabbath that they walk far enough that they look and they see the soldier standing in front of the tomb. Maybe they can even see where the seal is on the tomb and how it's set up on the tomb that, that, that no one can get. See, that, 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 that stone was put in front of that so no one could go in. Oh, that stone was put up there as a block or as a, 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 a hindrance for everyone to get to where Jesus was at. So what that stone was there. Oh, I'm about to preach. I'm just getting to where I want to be. 
That stone was there to keep, keep Mary and keep Martha and to keep John and to keep all the other disciples and the apostles from coming and stealing His body. And that's why the guards are there. So Sunday, I can imagine, because I know how the women are, I can imagine them sitting there and worrying. They were worrying. They were worrying so much that when they got up early on Monday morning and they gathered up their spices and they gathered up uh, uh, Sunday morning, when they got up early on Sunday morning and they were gathering everything up and they began to walk to the tomb because it was at the break of daylight. They were able to go there. The Bible even tells us the question that was on their mind is who will roll away the stone for us? Who's going to move the stone? Who's going to break the seal? Who's going to, who's going to take care of the guards that are out in front? And the closer they got, the more apprehensive they were. The closer they got, the more nervous they were. Until finally they could see where the tomb was at. And they could see that the stone was no longer there. And they could see that the soldiers were no longer there. One text says that they ran to the, to the garden tomb. And when they got there, there was a fellow that was standing there actually sitting on the stone. And his words were, Why seek ye the living among the dead? For Jesus is no longer here. Oh my God, I'm about to preach and I feel the Holy Ghost. Why are you looking for Him when He is not here? Why are you looking for Him? For He is risen. He is alive. I had not even looked at my first note yet. I've read this 50,000 times. But here's the thing. There's some people in this room today. There's some men and women in this room today, maybe watching by video later, that you got stones in your life. You got things that prevent you from getting to Christ. See, that stone was not there to hold him because no stone can hold him. Can I preach to you and tell you this morning that one text says that when the when, when, that the earth shook when the angel's feet hit the ground, the earth shook because of the strength of that angel and that one angel, what took several men to roll out of the way, I believe one angel took one finger and just moved it out of the way. But he didn't move it so Jesus could come out because we find out later where Jesus can just come through a wall. He can come in a room that's locked. There is nothing that will keep Jesus from getting to where you are. But there are are things that keep us from getting to where Jesus is. You might say, Pastor, I don't know what you're talking about. What can keep me from Jesus? Well, there's a lot of things that can keep me from Jesus. One thing that can keep you from Jesus is your pride. Well, if I go pray, then they're going to know that I'm a bad person. No, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. One thing that keeps you, one, one stone that you have in your way is, is your past uh, uh, that, that, that the enemy always keeps bringing up. How can you go pray? How can you go to Jesus? You're not worthy to go to Jesus. Uh, you, you've, been, you've done this. You've been a drug addict. Uh, you, you've had uh, 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 all kinds of relationships. Uh, you've done this and you've done that. You're not worthy to go to Christ. But let me teach you today that, it, that don't let that stone stay in your way. Don't let that stone be in front of you that will keep you to going to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Don't let a stone stay in your way. Some of you sitting here this morning, God's got callings in your life and you've made mistakes. Welcome to the crowd. You might say, Pastor, you don't know what I've done. I don't care what you've done. The women were worried how we're going to move this stone. Some of you have stones. Stones are hindrance. You have the stone of fear. I'm just preaching to you what the Lord told me. You have the stone of doubt. You have the stone of anger. You're mad and you don't even know why you're mad. You have the stone that your family... Maybe, maybe people know stuff going on in your family's life or maybe they know what went on in your parents' life, but that's not you. 
I don't know how many times I've talked to people that are drug addicts and they say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm this way because my daddy was this way. No, you're that way because you chose that path. I don't care what your daddy was. I don't care what your mother was. Uh, you are who you choose to be. And you are what you choose to be. And I choose today to accept that Christ is my Savior and to let Him to come into my life. We put stones up. Mary... And those women were saying, who's going to move the stone? How are we going to get the stone out of our way? But when they got there, it was already moved. It was not there. Scripture gives several accounts, and just like if you need any account, you've got four different men telling four different stories. They're all going to have a little different vision of it or a little different version. And different versions tell different things that happened at this time where, where one disciple runs in after Mary and, and, and John comes behind him and he comes out and they're, they're all excited but they're scared as well. Because they don't know what's happened. Then Scripture says, one place in, in the text that Scripture says that Jesus looked at one lady, Mary, and she wants to hug him. He's resurrected. From the dead. And she wants to hug him. She wants to throw her arms around him. She wants to wash his feet uh, and with, with, with her tears and dry it with her hair. She wants, to, she wants to put her arms around him so bad because he's been dead. And she saw him die. She saw Joseph of Arimathea take him from the cross. She saw him put in the tomb. But Jesus says, Mary, don't touch me. I've not been to the Father yet. To you and I, that means nothing. But to the Jewish custom, what that means is that high priest, he had to be ceremonial cleansed before he went before the Father into the Holy of Holies and to offer up the blood sacrifice. What Jesus was saying, Mary, I haven't went to the Father yet, but I'm going to go to Him and I'm going to come back. And when I come back, you can touch me all you want. You can put your, you can put your fingers in my, the nail prints in my hand. You can put your hand in my side as He told Thomas. Uh, we can sit down and we can talk. Let me tell somebody something today in this room. Today you can go to Jesus. Today you can touch Him. Today He can heal your body. Today He can set you free. Why leave this building in Easter Resurrection Sunday with that stone that's been in front of you for 20 years? Pastor, you don't know my life. Let me tell you about hard life. You don't know mine. Life can be difficult sometimes. Life can be unfair at some times. But Jesus cares. Life can turn your world upside down at times. But Jesus cares. Life can literally knock you to your knees at times. But Jesus cares. The scripture says that Jesus had left the tomb and the women were, were worried about that stone. Today, I believe there's somebody in this house that you're worried. There's things in your life. There's things in your life that have separated you from God. There's things in your life. Maybe you have known Him. Maybe you have made that profession of faith. Maybe you've prayed before. But just life happens. I believe today is your day. I've been so excited about this day, I didn't hardly sleep at all last night. Literally. Didn't sleep hardly at all. Because I have been excited to tell somebody that he's mo it's more than just being in the tomb. It's more than on the cross. That He is alive and He cares for you. He loves you. Scripture says He'll stick closer than your family, than your brother. He loves you. So let's roll away the stone of unbelief. Let's roll away the stone of our past. Let's roll away the stone of doubt. Let's roll them away. You might say, Pastor, I can't. I know a man that can. Isn't it odd how nobody wants to, wants to let you forget your past? Right? I was talking to a lady this week and she said, she said, preacher, if you ever see anything or hear anything on me, you know, it's not who I am, but that's my past. And I said, let me tell you something, we all got a past. I don't care what you've done. I really don't care what you're going to do. I want to know what you're doing. 
So some of you sitting in this room are coming to the music today. You have those stones in front of you. The women themselves were helpless standing before the stone. Listen to what the pastor is saying. Those women knew they were helpless. Those women knew that there was no physical way that they could move the stone because Scripture says it was a great stone. Big enough that even the angels sat upon it. They were helpless. Today, you're helpless to remove your sin. You can't live good enough. You can't give enough finance or money to the church or charities or whatever. You can't give enough. You're helpless to remove that stone. You can't do it. I'm one of those guys that I, I, I'm just, I'm going to give you a little honest confession today. I literally despise asking anybody help with anything. I hate it. You might say, well, that's pride. Yeah, it is. I guess it is. I just, I, I know people are busy and I know people's got things to do and I just literally hate with, I'm, but there are times here a while back I had to, to move some stuff and there was no way I could do it by myself. You know what I've done? I tried. I strained. I tried to get a vehicle around, back to, went and borrowed a trailer off of Tony and that had a lower gate and lowered it down and I tried and I tried and tried until finally I come to the conclusion Bruce, you can't do this by yourself. So you know what I did? I swallowed that pride. I picked up the phone. I called a couple of buddies of mine. And it almost made me mad because what I had been trying to do for about four hours, we done in 20 seconds. Are you with me? And one of the men looked at me and said, Pastor, anytime you need me, just holler at me. You need me to do anything, just give me a yell. I'm always here for you. But see, there's a part of me, the stubborn part, that don't want to ask. Can I tell you today that you cannot live good enough to get your sin gone? Can I take it one more step? It's not a one-shot deal. It's a daily progress. Daily. Daily. So today you're standing here and you're standing got a stone of unbelief, a stone of doubt, a stone of fear, a stone of anger, a stone of your past. I got a list of about 30 things of stones. But you already know what your stone is. I can't move it. Can I tell someone that today you got stuff in your past. It's there. You've done it. But you can't change it. Let Christ love you for just who you are. Let Him change you. He can roll the stone. He can move it. That's why He came. See, the enemy wants to destroy you. He don't want you to have hope. He don't want you to have joy. He don't want you to have peace. He don't want you to overcome drugs. He don't want you to overcome alcohol. He don't want you to overcome fear. Because when you're there, He's got you right where He wants you. He don't want you having guilt all the time. See, when you give your heart to Christ, He removes the guilt. He removes the shame. And all you have to do is ask. So as you bow your heads with me today, when we preach a message, oftentimes we and I've preached this thing for about 20-something days in my head. I've laid in the bed at night and run these thoughts through my head. But when it comes to that day, when we end, we, we think we haven't done adequate enough. But I believe today I have done enough you're in this room on this Resurrection Sunday and there is a stone in front of you. It's your past. 
it's sin that you haven't asked Christ to forgive you for. Or maybe it's sin that you have asked Him to forgive you for, but you've done the same thing again. It's fear. It's doubt. It's unbelief. If that is you today, and you are that person, I will not embarrass you. But I want to ask you, while every head is bowed, eyes are closed, I want you to think about yourself. Don't think about your neighbor. If that's you, would you raise that hand and say, Pastor, that's me. There's some stones that I need moved so I can get to Jesus. Thank you, men. Thank you, sweetheart. Somebody else. Thank you, sis. Somebody else. Come on. Thank you. Come on, Dad. There's some dads in this room. There's some stones there. Thank you, sir. Somebody else? I'm going to give you just a minute to think. Thank you, my brother. I got some stones that I can't move. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, kids. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Somebody else? Thank you, young man. Somebody else? Just raise it. Thank you, brother. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. Some more in this room today. Pastor, I got some stones. Thank you, brother. Thank you, sis. Thank you. Thank you, sis. My Lord. Pastor, I got some stuff. Nobody knows about but just me. And it bothers me. It hinders me. 30 more seconds. Thank you, sir. Thank you, son. Thank you. Thank, thank you, sis. Thank you. Thank you, young man. Ten more seconds. Pastor, I got some stuff. Stand with me around this house. Scripture says that Mary and Martha and, and the other ladies, they got up early. They got up early to go to Jesus. Thank God for the women of the body of Christ. They got up early. They said, forget being afraid, forget everything else. I'm going to get to Him. Number one, you've got to get up. Then the Scripture said, and they began to walk. They came to Him. I know He can come to you where you're at. But you're that person today, and we had many hands go up around this room, and you may be visiting, and we're so honored that you're here today, and I love you in Christ. I'm not calling you a lost person. I'm not saying you're a sinner. I don't know your life. I don't need to know your life. But you're here today and there's hindrances in your life. You raise that hand. I'm going to ask you to make an effort. We got plenty of room in front. Nobody's going to, this is a judgment free area. Hope City's judgment free. We don't judge you. Because we've all just been sinners saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. And if that's you today, I'm going to ask you to do something. It took a lot of courage for Mary and the other women. That's it, brother. You be the first. It took a lot of courage for Mary and those women to get up and go. It's going to take everything in you. And I'm going to ask you to come and let him move your stone. Would you come right now? Right now, as they begin to sing. I'm not going to come get you. I'm going to ask you to come. Come. Surely it was through Since when it was impossible It was all true Friday's disappointment Sunday's empty too Since when it was impossible 